What's up y'all? I'm Madison Payne and welcome to another video. If you're new here and you like budget style and beauty, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I make videos like this three times a week. But in today's video, I'm doing a highly requested chatty get ready with me. This is my first one I've done. I might've been kind of all over the place. I'm gonna be creating this look today as well as talking about beauty standards, um, giving you guys a little troop troop update. I've talked about a lot of things. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I have already gone ahead and curled my hair using my T3, the T3 tapered wand or like I like to refer to it my mermaid wand. All right she looks crazy but we are going to go with it and the look that I'm doing in today's video is going to be really similar to how I wore my makeup in my Amazon video. You guys loved it. It was the most compliments I've ever gotten on my makeup. I don't have a primer on. I'm not going to prep my skin. I'm just going to go right into it. I kind of have mixed feelings on primers. Sometimes I feel like they work. Sometimes I feel like they don't. But what I do always use when doing my makeup is Lumify Eye Drops. If you're not familiar with these, they just brighten the whites of your eyes. They make you look like you're awake. I use this pretty much anytime I have somewhere to go or if I'm filming, so highly recommend these. So now I'm gonna start with my contour. I like to do my highlight and contour first just because I feel like layering it up this way makes my makeup stay on better. Maybe it doesn't, but I feel like it does. <laughs> And my skin is so bad right now, you guys, so I'm going in extra and covering up all these zits. I actually used to have, I can't, I shouldn't even complain about my skin right now because I used to have really terrible cystic acne until I did Accutane, which I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions on Accutane. If you guys want me to do a whole video on my acne journey, I'm happy to do that. And I'll show you guys pictures of what my skin looked like. And for my highlight, I just used the Revlon Photo Ready, the Candid Concealer in the color Fair. I'm gonna go in with the LA Girl Pro Conceal for my contour. And this is actually in the shade Mahogany. I also like Beautiful Bronze. It just depends on what I can get my hands on. But yeah, just let me know if you guys want a video on that. If anyone would be interested, I'm happy to film it. So yeah, I've never done a chatty get ready. I thought I would just kind of update you guys on life, what was going on, maybe get into some other topics that I've gotten in the comments lately. And now I'm just gonna blend out my contour with an It Cosmetics foundation brush. I use foundation brushes, like buffing brushes, as well as makeup sponges. Also, I know I'm really heavy handed before people are like, oh my God, I know, I know. I've literally had makeup artists tell me that for years. But one of the comments I've gotten a lot recently is asking about Trooper updates. So Trooper's doing so well. On the 8th, he it will be six months. I can't even believe that. I was actually looking at old videos of him and he has gotten so big. And I definitely am planning on doing more videos with him. The only reason y'all didn't see a video with him last month was just because he was getting fixed and then he had to wear a cone. And he was so clumsy with the cone. He hated it, so I didn't really want to film with him with the cone on, but he does have his cone off. So I am planning on doing a day in the life puppy vlog. You guys can look out for that. Another question I've gotten in the comments lately is if I'm gonna make my press on nail video. I absolutely am. I've actually already filmed the downward shot of me putting on my nails, um, and then I wanna do a separate part talking about it so you guys just aren't staring at my hands for 10 minutes. I did wanna kind of talk through it as well. And honestly, I have so much respect for YouTubers that shoot a lot of their content downward. It's so difficult to be in frame and to be like doing something. And that's even with me having a tripod that does do downward shots. Because of my mom's content, if you guys don't know, my mom is a YouTuber. We do already have um, a tripod that does that. I do plan on having that video out within the next week or so, so you guys can look out for that. As well as I am gonna make weight loss content. I'm actually gonna do a Q&A today. That's what I'm getting ready for. I'm gonna film, um, it's really hard to talk and do your makeup. I like, I wanna, I wanna just chat. I'm gonna try to remind myself to keep doing my makeup or else this video is gonna be seriously so long. But today I'm getting ready to film a QA. and a I asked you guys to send me questions over on Instagram and I got a ton of responses. I definitely wasn't expecting to get so many weight loss questions because I made that video so long ago and no one watched my weight loss journey. If you guys don't know the video I'm talking about, it's where I lost 40 pounds. Oh, and by the way, I'm going in with my Bobbi Brown Correcting Concealer. This is in the shade Light Peach, just to cover up my zits a little bit better because um, this is really great for the under eyes, but, and my skin normally isn't this bad, but I'm gonna go in with something a little bit more heavy duty. 
but nobody watched that video until about a month ago. Um, it had only a thousand views and now I think it has almost 50,000 views. So everyone's like, where's the weight loss content? I was like, oh, I didn't know anyone cared about it. But yes, I'm definitely planning on making more weight loss content since you guys are interested in it. Now I'm gonna go in with my Smashbox Studio Skin in full coverage, this is a 24 hour foundation is what they claim. Not that I've ever tried it for that long, but this is my favorite foundation right now and I am using it in the shade 2.22. I also do have this in a darker color as well because I normally spray tan and before anyone comes to me in the comments, no, I'm not going to a spray tan salon. I have a spray tan machine at home, which sounds so bougie and so extra, but I did buy it last year just because my mom and I both would spray tan for special events and it was getting to the point where for both of us, it was getting pretty pricey and so I did buy a spray tan machine and within like the first month of using it, um, it did pay for itself using it on both of us. So I love it. Is it as good as a professional spray tan? Of course not. And if I have stuff that's really, really important, I will still go spray tan. But it's super nice to have. I just keep it popped up in my garage. And it's actually from Amazon. I can link it below if anyone's interested in it. And I spray myself as well as spraying my mom. But the solution that I use is fantastic. But when it comes off, you really do have to fully like scrub it off. And I haven't done that. And my tan is like super crazy right now. I don't know if you guys can tell. My tan's really crazy right now, so that's why we're in sleeves <laughs> and even beyond just trying to match your skin tone I really like the way foundation looks being brought all the way down I think it just makes such a big difference which speaking of big differences I've been receiving this comment a lot more often lately and I know that it's not meant to offend and I'm not offended or anything so I just want to preface that before I say it but um, especially with like my Ulta video and some of you guys are discovering my transformation videos I've noticed that I've been getting this comment a lot more by the way, I am blending out my foundation with one of my Beaky Blender. This is from Amazon. And I like to, on days that I really want my makeup to last, um, spray the Blender Ball with the Urban Decay, one of the all-nighter sprays. This one is the Ultra Matte Formula. But this definitely works using it at the end of your makeup. But I find that spraying it in between layers really, really locks it in. So that is just what I'm doing now. But anyways, back to the comments. But I have been getting a lot more comments lately that are like, whoa, it's such a big difference when you have makeup on and people are suggesting to me to wear less makeup. Thanks for thinking that I'm cute without makeup. But y'all, I do not do all of this and spend money on makeup and spend hours getting ready to look the same as when I get up in the mornings. Like, thank you. I'm going for a big difference. Not that I have any problem with the way that I look without makeup. If I had a problem with how I looked without makeup, I would not film it and broadcast it for the whole world to see. I'm fine how I look. Actually, how much I don't care, y'all, is that I literally did a transformation video when I was ill. Like, that is how much I do not care. I'm gonna bake my face with my air sponge translucent powder. So I'm essentially just putting it anywhere that I did my lighter contour. But I think it's this really interesting thing that's happening that now not only are women, I'm just kind of pivoting off of that conversation, but now not only are women expected to be beautiful when we're all glammed up, but now I feel like there's, there's this whole new pressure of that you have to look gorgeous without makeup on. And y'all, I ain't I ain't going for that. That is like way too much pressure. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my Rimmel Stay Matte. I've like hit Pam so hard on it, but I love, love, love the Rimmel Stay Matte line. And this is in the shade 25 Toffee. So I'm just using a powder brush and I'm gonna go over every place that I did the contour. But yeah, now I'm really finding that there's like this whole new pressure to be like go just without makeup on. But y'all, that is a standard that I am just not going for. Plus, I also think it's creating a culture of women getting work done and then not wanting to disclose it, which I get work done. I'm super, super candid about getting work done. As a matter of fact, I actually filmed a video, but then Rona and everything happened. I never published it and it is on my old background, which is to the side of me that you guys told me you didn't want to see anymore. Um, so I never published it, but I'm also going in with toffee and I'm just making it the first layer of my eyeshadow look. But I'm definitely willing to make a video if you guys want to see um, me breaking down all the work I've had done. I think however people want to handle getting work done is totally fine. I told myself, especially when I became a blogger and an Instagrammer, which if you guys don't know, I've only been doing YouTube for about six months, but I've been an Instagrammer and blogger for six years and I've been doing it full time for three. And I just told myself that if I ever got anything done, I would disclose it because I feel like it's obvious and people are gonna speculate about it anyway. Um, also, 
also a comment that I've been getting more um, is about like my grammar and slang. You guys, I talk in slang, I talk in sing song. I'm from the South and I'm not gonna speak for all Southern people, but a lot of Southern people that I know, we, we that's how we speak. It's, oh, that doohickey, that thing with Bob. Um, we have like random saying, you know, till the cows come home. So y'all, that is just uh, part of my personality. But yeah, I always told myself that I would be really transparent about whatever work that I got done because I remember being younger and for example, I have very, very thin hair. I have extensions in my hair, but my hair is actually the same length. Like this is my, extensions and this is a piece of my actual hair you can see it's it's the same length I just use extensions to fill in my hair so um I do go to Bellamy Beauty Bar here in Houston if anyone is um, interested in extensions I love their extensions but I really remember being younger and being really self-conscious because my hair wasn't thick and I would buy all these products and I didn't understand why my hair didn't look like girls in magazines social media wasn't really a thing I'm gonna age myself a little bit and I found out oh celebrities have extensions or they're wearing wigs or all of that and I think it's fine however people want to look I don't think shaming someone for wearing extensions is productive at all because then that person's just gonna wear extensions and they ain't gonna tell nobody. I didn't want anyone to look at me and be like, wow, my hair doesn't grow like hers or my lips aren't as full. Like sis, you can buy these lips too. And I think however people wanna look and feel their best is totally fine. So I'm also gonna put Devilish on my bottom waterline and I'm using a MAC 223 brush. Okay, back to the like having to be beautiful without makeup thing. Really noticed a huge trend in the last couple of years um, especially with celebrities and influencers of showing their no makeup selfies and all of that are really misleading because most of us are not our natural God-given state. Like if you have a spray tan, that's not your natural look. If you have eyelash extensions, like sis, that's not natural. Microbladed eyebrows, any of that. So even if you're not getting cosmetic surgery, most of us are doing things that aren't natural. Like even if you get your nails done, that's not natural. Now I'm gonna go in with Bang Bang and I'm just using an e.l.f. eyeshadow brush and I'm gonna just put it on my whole lid. And I'll get compliments often on how I look without makeup and I'm just like, and they're like, oh my God, you're naturally so pretty. Like, oh, y'all, this isn't natural. I don't want, I'm not trying to put that out there. I really do feel like the intention behind the no makeup selfie is to encourage people to feel good about themselves, but I kind of feel like it's just doing the opposite because you look at them and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't look like that without makeup. And it's like, sis, they have eyelash extensions, microblade eyebrows, they got fillers. And even if they don't do all of that, they probably get facials done or they have a $500 night cream that they use. Like I just, I feel like it ends up being like a humble brag. Like I'm so gorgeous without makeup on. So I don't know. I don't really find it to be particularly helpful, but I would love to know what you guys think. Am I the only person who thinks like that? So now I'm gonna go in and do my eyebrows and I do have my eyebrows microbladed by the way, which people are always surprised by because my eyebrows are so bushy, but I got them microbladed to even them out, although it is starting to kind of wear off a little bit so I'm using the Rimmel London Pro Brow micro pen and this is pretty heavy so I only use a little bit of it and then I go through it with my make me brow gel to hold all of my crazy brow hairs in place kind of switching gears to YouTube I wanted to start a YouTube channel for years I thought I was gonna get more hate about the way that I look um, and my appearance you just you just hear how like mean people can be on YouTube y'all know I get hate about like super random stuff. Like I said in my Amazon video, I'll get hate about like my ankles or I got a lot of hate about, <laughs> so random. I got a lot of hate about saying that I was in between 5'2 and 5'3 for my styling videos. And you guys, I, I literally only said that because I thought it sounded kind of like, I guess pretentious to be like, I'm 5'2 and a half. I just, I don't know. To me being like, oh, I'm somewhere in between 5'2 and 5'3 just sounded better to me. This is the Essence Gimme Brow by the way. And I was just trying to do it as a reference anyway so people could like plan their sizes because you know if you're like 5'6 or 5'7 it's gonna hit you different. That was all I was trying to do and that triggered so many people. They were like choose a side you're 5'2 or you're 5'3. I'm like whoa why are you so mad at me? So yeah the the YouTube hate has been interesting especially coming from Instagram. I will get hate about the way that I look or I will get hate about my size which blows my mind because I'm a size 6'8 so I'm, I'm just like well, like what are you guys talking about the average American woman is a size 14 like what are you saying and so to hear all of that and I kind of carried that fear over to YouTube and I've just been overwhelmed by I mean like I said I got some hate but I've just been overwhelmed by all of the kind comments I mean 
and I'm not fishing for compliments. If no one told me I was pretty ever again on YouTube, like it would be fine to have you guys say how much you love my body or that you're so excited because you found someone that looks like you. I was so surprised. I really let that fear of like the way that I look majorly hold me back on the platform and that hasn't been the case at all so if you are wanting to do something whether it's youtube or whatever and you have a fear about something it probably isn't even real like i i really want to take this moment <laughs> during this very superficial get ready with me but i do want to take this moment to encourage you to just do it because whatever you're worried about probably isn't even true anyway. Okay, I'm not gonna talk through my eyeliner just because I feel like if I talk, I'm gonna ruin this, so I'm just gonna do it. Okay, so I did a rough first layer of eyeliner. I'm not that picky about my eyeliner before I put on lashes because I know I'm gonna have to clean it up after I put lashes on anyway. And so I'm gonna use the Grande Drama Intense Thickening Mascara with Castor Oil. And I've been using this mascara since my Ulta haul and I love it. So now I'm gonna wipe off my powder and I'm just gonna darken up my contour a little bit. I'm waiting for my mascara to dry and then I'm gonna plop on some lashes, which are really just the most like changing part of the whole thing. So I'm gonna go in with It Cosmetics contour brush and I'm gonna use the Makeup Revolution Mega Bronzer. I also showed this in my Ulta haul. You know, I'm just one big optical illusion, you guys. So I do have a round face. I like to contour it up, I do. Um, so now I'm going to go in with just an eyeshadow brush and I'm going to lightly contour out my nose with powder. And I like to start from the eyeshadow. That way it doesn't look just like two floating lines, you know what I'm saying? And then to make sure I don't have any harsh lines, I will go in again with powder. This time I'm using the Rimmel Stay Matte in 001. It is transparent. And I'm just going to use a MAC powder brush. This is in 159. And I like to go in... And do it pretty heavy on my under eye and I like to go in and just kind of blend out the rest of it so I don't have any crazy harsh lines I also just love that this keeps me really matte in the summertime I live in Houston where I have talked about this before but if you guys have never been to Houston whew, it gets real real humid here so but I do have oily skin and then on top of it when you live somewhere humid you know you gotta do what you gotta do so now I'm gonna go in with blush I've really been into the flower beauty blushes lately and this is in the shade warm hibiscus hibiscus i don't know why that sounded so weird and i'm also using the flower beauty powder blush brush you guys I already forgot what i was talking about before i started talking about the makeup again i really think these chatty get ready's with me it should be called makeup and multitask because you do have this is harder than it looks and i like to do my blush like you guys can see on my forehead pretty much up my contour and even on my chin i just feel like it brings some life to the whole look i'm also going to bring my bronzer down my neck just because um, I'm not as tan right now. Um, so now I'm gonna plop on some lashes and I'm also gonna do that off camera because I feel like this video is getting so long. I put on my Ardell Faux Mink lashes that were also in my Ulta haul. Those are still the lashes that I've been using. I forget the number, I wanna say 854, but I'll make sure I put the correct pair below and then I'm gonna use my Duo eyelash glue. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I do have my lashes on and while I'm waiting for the glue to dry before I go over my last layer of eyeliner, I'm going to go ahead and do my lips and I'm going to use NYX Suede Matte Lip Liner in the color Brooklyn Thorn. Also, you guys, this desperately needs to be sharpened, but you know, here we all are. Now I'm going to go in with Too Faced Melted Liquid Lipstick and this is in the shade Nude. So now I'm going to go in with the Revlon Stay Glossy and this is, what shade is this in? And Down to Gloss. I really, really like this entire line of lip glosses and they're super affordable, like y'all don't sleep on Rimmel. Okay, now I'm gonna fix my eyeliner. I'm also not gonna talk during this one because I don't wanna have a catastrophe. Oh gosh, you guys, I totally forgot to put highlighter on because my blush was just so glowing on its own. So I'm gonna go in now with the Physician's Formula Rose All Day Petal Glow. And this was also from my Ulta haul. I love this product. And I'm just using a Sephora fan brush just to um, apply the product. And I like to put it on my cheekbones, down the brim of my nose, as well as my little cupid's bow on my lip. Okay, now I'm actually done. You guys, I definitely should have waited to take my hair down, but it's okay. So I'm going to now finish with the All Nighter Ultra Matte Spray. So that's it for today's video. This is the final look. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today while I got ready. If you guys like this format, the style of video, please let me know below in the comments and I will definitely make more of them. Subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video and haven't done so yet. And I will see you guys in the next one.